In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to build the circuit for the egg timer. Okay, so first of all, I need to open up Circuit Wizard. Now, this pro, this file will also have the circuit. It will have the uh, PCB on there. Obviously, there is no program. However, we still use the setting that gives the the option. So it's the circuit with Genie Flow charts that we want. So say OK. Now to start with, we always start with power. So I'm going to grab a battery and bring that over to this side here. Now the battery is a six volts, is what it needs. So I'm just going to double click on that and say six volts. The next thing I'm going to bring in is the actual microcontroller. So if I go on to the right hand side up here to the gallery, down to microcontrollers, uh, sorry, integrated circuits. And I want the top one here, which is our 555 timer. Okay, and I'm going to put that uh, about there. Okay, now uh, in terms of the power, power goes to pin 8, so I'm going to connect that straight up there. Okay, so that's going to come around there, and the ground is pin 1, so I'm going to connect that round there to pin 1. I've missed that slightly, so I'm just going to click on there and tidy it up, otherwise that's going to annoy me. There we go. Uh, pin 4 also just goes straight up, so I'm just going to connect that. They t you tie those two together. Okay, other pins that are tied together as well are six and seven. So those two go tied together like that. So I'm just tying those. Okay, let's start to have a look at these other pins. So I'm going to add in, first of all, my my kind of output. Okay, so this pin three is the output. Uh, so I need an LED, a buzzer, and a resistor. Okay, so let's go and grab a resistor to start with. So a resistor here, bring that into there. And okay, now it needs to be a 330, so I'm going to double click on that, change it up to 330. Obviously, I need to get rid of the K, otherwise, it'd be a thousand times too big. And I'm going to connect that round to there, and I'm going to bring uh, an LED in. So I go down to light emitting diodes, that's going to come in here. And I'm just going to connect that up there, and that's going to go into that pin three. The buzzer is under audio, so I'll back to the gallery, down to where it says audio, and the top one is a buzzer. I'm just going to connect the positive going up there, so that's the positive, and that comes down there to the other end. Okay, so when that switches on, both the light and the buzzer will go off. Okay. Next thing I'm going to look at is, in fact, actually, there's another LED and another buzzer. So why don't, while we're here, I'm going to be a little bit lazy. I'm just going to highlight those two components at the same time. So they're both in pinky purple. Go Control C to copy or right click copy, whichever one you like. And I'm going to go paste uh, over here. OK, so there, there will be a light on all the time. So this is the light that's on all the time. Uh, is it yeah, so connect that up. And connect that up there. Okay, so there is a, a light that's going to be on all the time, just so you know it's working. This will be the one that goes off uh, when you're when the time is up. Next thing I want to add in is going to be thinking about the let's put the should we put the capacitors? Let's go for the capacitors. So back to the gallery, down to capacitors near the top, about five or six down, and the two sorts that I need. The first one is a um, ceramic one, so it's not electrolytic. This is the one that looks like kind of like a an orange lentil. Okay, and I'm just going to connect that from pin five across there to ground. Now, if I zoom in there, you'll see there's no positive on there. Okay, if I double click on it, I want to change the value to 100, and I'm going to use the drop down box to change it to 100 NF. Let's say okay. All right, I might just move that label over there, and I don't need the C1. Okay, get rid of that. I also need another capacitor about here. So while we're here, this is an electrolytic one. I'm going to grab that and plonk it about uh, there. That should do the job. Now this one is going to be a 470. It's the right unit. It's a microfarad. But I just need to up that to 470 and say OK. All right. Now that is going to connect to pin 6 and 7. OK. So I'm going to connect it up like that. Next thing I need is to start thinking about the... Um, all the switches okay and there's a lot of switches on this in fact i'm going to delete this line here now because there needs to be a switch in there as well okay 
So let's go to switches, the two sorts that we need. So under switches, you'll see there are push switches, okay, which we're going to use one of those. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to spin that round using Control and R, so it faces like that. And we go across a bit there, it's going to go down there. Now this is the button, this is going to be our reset button. Okay. And the other type of switch that we're going to use a lot of, we're going to need five of these, is going to be the latching switch. Okay, so these are physical switch. Okay, so I'm going to grab one of these. Okay, this will be my toggle switch, you know, that big metal. So again, spinning it around, control and R. Put that in the space. Always a good thing to put in there as a safety feature. Smoke starts pouring out. Okay, you want to be able to actually switch off your circuit so before no damage happens. Okay, the next one I need are my four other switches. Okay, so again, that same switch, that uh, push to make, sorry, that single pole, single throw switch. I'm going to spin that around. Now I need four of these. Okay, so I'm just going to put one there. Just move them down a little bit because I, I need. I know I need to put some resistors in here. I need a resistor here and I'll have a series of resistors and that's what's going to give us that difference in terms of the, the timing. And I'll come down a little bit more just so it's kind of level. There. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste that. So Control C, Control V. I want another one there. Control V. I'm just pasting another one there, and I'm going to have another one in there. Okay, so these are my four switches there, and now I need to add in my resistors. Okay, uh, so back to resistors. Add to the gallery. Half a dozen down. Find resistors and bring that one in there. Now this one is going to be the longest one, so this will be for my longest time. So I'm just going to connect that up to there. So this one we are 1 million. So double click on there. I want to change the unit, the numbers are right, to just change the unit up one to 1 million. Okay, that'll give me that, that longest time when that's closed. Okay, next one. Grab another one in. So this one here is going to be an 820. Okay, so I just need to double click on there and just time this just change the numbers 820. Don't need to bother deleting anything, I just type straight over. Okay, top tip there for you. If something's in blue, it's on overwrite anyway. You can just type straight onto it. Okay, Ooh, a bit of a, a bit wobbly there, but anyway. Uh so that's a 560. Again, I just type it, don't need to push delete. I might move that because otherwise again that's gonna annoy me if it's not straight. There we go. Okay, so that's my 560, and I want one more. This is going to be my 220 for my shortest time scale. So I'm just going to connect up to there, double click, and say 220. All right, I need one last resistor. That's for this um, my reset switch that goes in here, and that's going to connect to pin two. So I might just move that down a little bit because pin two is here. And that can go to there and go to there. Okay, now do check that there's no little extra dots here. The dots should be on that junction there. There should be a dot there, dot here, dot here, and on the top. Okay, but just check that there's no extra dots. There's not connected anything up that it shouldn't be connected up to. Okay, might move that down a little bit there just so it's a bit neater. Right, so that should be 10k. Now, let's see if it works. So, push play. Um, oh, something seems to be happening on my computer, I don't know why. So what I should be doing here is, as it's running, I want to close that switch there, and then I want to close off the shortest switch and push the reset button. Oh, here we go, it's working now. So I'm going to close that, and you should hear it starts to beep. I'm going to close that pin there and push the reset button. So now you should see the time is counting up, okay, and when that gets to 120, it should go off, because that's that first one. The first one is a two minute on there. Uh, this one will be my five minute, that'll be my seven minute, and that'll be the full 10 minute one there, okay? If I want to, I might actually just double click on there. I could put a caption in there and just write two min on there. I could double click on this one. And say this one will be my five minute. This will be my uh, 
a seven minute timer. And the final one, the longest one, this will be my 10 minute timer. And that's just gonna help me to be able to see kind of what's going on. So when I'm moving forward, what I might want to do here just to tidy up is get rid of the R numbers. Okay, I think to do that, I might have to push the stop button and just delete the R numbers. All right, because there's quite a lot of labels already on there. Okay, I might even want to move them across a little bit just to make it look a little bit neater. So this one's 1 million for 10 minutes. That one's 7 minutes on a 820K. This one's 5 minutes for that one. And that one. Okay, so if you've done that, great. Well done. Screenshot that and upload that for the first silver batch.